This episode of Rise of the Triad is brought to you by the Dope Fish. So, we finally get to talk about this fish. You met this enemy in Commander Keen 4 into the Well of Wishes level. It was quite a bastard to avoid because it will heat you and kill you instantly. It was notably famous for being the second dumbest creature in the universe and having swim swim hungry as a motto. The Dopefish has pretty much been the mascot of Apogee and Id, appearing in a lot of games in several different forms. Here's a few games in which he got mentioned or even appeared, and that includes obviously yeah, Daikatana. So if you want to read more about the Dopefish, here's a fine little website that's straight from 1996. I figure that the Dopefish deserves some sort of introduction, considering that Episode 4 of Rise of the Triad will be played by running Rise of the Triad with the Dopefish common line. Let's see what's gonna happen. Okay, so the Dopefish common line makes it so that Scott Miller personally gives you brain trauma. How cute. Okay, at least nothing seems to have changed. Okay, is it safe to come out now? Oh god, no! So, we might not see the dopefish proper into this game, but his insanity is clearly oh, oh, present. Oh, okay. I mean, just listen okay. at the new menu oh, oh, sounds. Oh, 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 boy. Boy. Okay. okay, so here we go. The time oh, has oh, finally oh, oh, come. No more stalling. Let's play episode 4! <laughs> Hope you wrote your will, because nothing is gonna save you from this horrible place. So, welcome to episode 4, entitled The Slow and the Dead. And we get the last new weapon that we see into the game, the Dark Staff. And it's pretty good, at least it is for this level, because it's appropriately suited for the enemies. These are the new enemies that you see into the game, the monks. They come in two varieties, fat and thin. The fat monks are called dead monks, and they are melee enemies. And the Dark Staff can shoot through doors. That's pretty much the one thing that I really like about this weapon, other than the fact that it shoots through a whole line of enemies all at once. This weapon is so wonderful into this episode. Its only drawback is that it takes about a second for the weapon to be primed, so it's kind of annoying. But in the end, the end result is always worth it. So, here is why I hate the monks. Yeah, they take about a decade before they die, because they just refuse to die, they don't want to, they're not interested, after all they're undead, so they're already dead. Oh god, here we go again, this is gonna be fun, oh ho ho! At least this level is not all that bad, I gotta say, we've got through the worst part of the entire level, we're gonna be smooth sailing for the rest of this level, because we finally get our good old doggy back. But yeah, those enemies have got so much health that not even dog mode can kill them by barking. Hey, at least the tin monks are giving me a hand with all of these fireballs. So, those are called dead fire monks, and these will be your main concern for this episode. God, these are really annoying. And they've got as much health, if not more health, than the dead monks. I can't really explain because they're so thin, they're supposed to be so weak, but here they can pretty much absorb as much damage than, say, a modern tank. So in general, the best way to deal with the monks as dog is pretty much just to jump on their head and crush them, because you're gonna kill them a lot faster this way than if you decided to munch them down or just bark at them, because, well, they're just way too strong. But hey, at least the dead fire monks still got this little deli that makes it so that they can shoot their fireballs really fast. Oh hey, a good random power up. I'm starting to be handy with those. And also, this level finally throws in fire pits into your face for the first time into the game. And yeah, there's another gun mode right here, along with a whole bunch of pits, so we're gonna finish this level as Midget Gun. 
And yeah, I'm saying we're gonna finish it because our gun mode is gonna last us the entirety of this level. This level is really short. It's basically just the intro level for the monks in order to teach you how to fight them and all of this because, well, it's a really small level and gun mode alone can pretty much clear out this entire level on its own. Alright, cultist. WHERE IS YOUR GOD NOW?! Well, the god of these cultists is the boss of this episode, so get ready for that. So, another thing that the Dolphish command line has done, which I haven't elaborated about yet, is, well, it changes all of the level names for really inane things. And yeah, that's the end of this level, which, by the way, was called Monkey Business, because those monks surely mean business. And here we go, that's the end of this level. It didn't even take four minutes to beat. And yet we've managed to toast it. How sweet. So in this level, I managed to stumble upon some really weird glitch. If you manage to get a dog mode while you're firing your last dark staff projectile, some weird things are bound to happen. Yeah, a dog with a machine gun. Well, that's kind of an entrance, but just you wait, because the moment that you revert back... Yep. Weren't we supposed to not have a Dark Staff anymore? Oh wait, now we have a Dark Staff that has unlimited ammo. How sweet. And it'll remain that way even when you switch levels. You can carry this staff up to the end of the game if you wanted to. So that's it for this level, which unfortunately didn't really showcase how much of a horrible thing episode 4 is going to be. But this episode has quite some time in order to change its mind. So coming up next, it's episode 4, Harrier 2, Fire and Brimstone.